Tenakoto, 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 Katoa. My wife got to say all the coolest stuff about what we do. And I'm, I'm super proud of all three of those projects. I'm really happy to discuss and engage with all of you around those projects. Um, but the, the role that I'm playing in describing some of our background and expertise is a little bit more general, saying, okay, those are, those are some of the examples of what we're doing, and they do keep us busy, but we have our eyes open for other opportunities to leverage the experience and the networks that we've been cultivating uh, for change makers here in the New Zealand ecosystem. So to give you a little bit more perspective about that uh, background and experience, as Ellie mentioned, we've spent a considerable amount of time living in Sub-Saharan Africa. Uh, she grew up there in, in large part um, with a bit of time in North Africa and together we spent time in Liberia for a while, Senegal, um, and then our projects have been implemented in now well over a dozen Sub-Saharan African countries with a whole host, well over a dozen major international um, INGOs, folks like UNICEF or CARE or Tear Fund or World Vision. Um, and just in the way that the New Zealand government is starting to break some of the stereotypes about the relevance of government or the speed of operating of government, there is a total sea change amidst these INGOs that have kind of a tired old reputation for maybe uh, manipulating you emotionally at night on a, on a, with, a, with an advertisement, right? Or, or having a bureaucracy or spending too much money on their, their cars, right? There's a, it's, a, it's a kind of, there's a bit of a blot on the reputation of the sector. But just as government is being shaken up here, and indeed just as the kind of tech savvy, fired up people are changing every industry, um, there is a lot of change happening uh, in that sector. And I want to land on those, the digital development principles that Ellie pointed out um, are probably the coolest disruptive hack on a giant bureaucratic system that I've ever seen. What they've done is um, they created all this momentum that all these organizations signed up and said, we're signatories of these principles. So whether it's the Bill and Melinda Gates Foundation, whether it's pretty much every UN organization, whether it's USAID, UK aid, they're all saying, these are ours. What that means is if you go for one of their contracts and you're open source and you're collaborative and you're working with people and you're working in this progressive new way, you're gonna get a contract that you never would have gotten five years ago. That was all locked up in giant consulting firms that are sometimes publicly traded, have like the Beltway Bandits. That was their show and you couldn't get in. I know because I was trying to get into that for, with this scrappy little company of ours for five, six years and it was just table scraps. And it's just been opened up. And a lot of the times the organizations don't even know they've signed them. Huge portions of their workforce, because they'll be in 150 countries. They'll have tens of thousands of employees. And they don't even know that these are the new operating protocols under which they need to work. So taking advantage of that now, if you're a principled change maker, if what you're trying to do is build the commons, if you're trying to incorporate people of the land and work from that principles value driven place, it is a really amazing opportunity. And it's one that we're super well networked into these organizations to the specific people who almost tricked them into signing up to these things. And I would love to help folks that are you know, working on, you're gonna hear from other fellows who are working on uh, things that help people to make collaborative decisions together. But not just kind of soft ones about like what's for dinner tonight, but like how are we gonna spend our shared bounty of money? How are we gonna make decisions that impact our prosperity and our health? There are, there are, new, there are new programs you're gonna hear about that belong on the world stage and quickly. Some of the innovation that New Zealand's already got on top of in terms of like giving legal personhood to different natural bodies is transformational. And with the country behind it and the iwi behind it, it is something that could quickly ripple out through international aid and development. And the benefit of going through these organizations is that if you, if you get into their DNA, you can scale into 150 countries. And there's only a handful of like brands that do that, maybe Coca-Cola, they're like one or two that have these supply chains. But if you can work with these systems, you don't have to necessarily have, you don't have to own the solution. The idea is if you're willing to share the solution, to let people start copy pasting the solution around, they will put their networks at your disposal. Right? And they will let you use the change making apparatus that they've been building for a very long time. So I'm super keen to help people to make some of those connections. And overwhelmingly my kind of passion and focus is on Africa and I feel very heart connected there and I love that, uh, that continent specifically like West Africa. I can get like very detailed about where I love it and why I love it. I'd love to share that with you. But I also wanna share kind of just uh, some colder rational arguments for why I think it belongs on your radar. 
we know that by the time we reach 20, uh, 2100, we've got 4 billion more people on the earth. 3 billion of them are going to be in Africa. The other billion are kind of distributed a little bit around like China, India. There's no other major demographic shift that's about to happen. But we know that 3 billion people will be added on that continent. Demographers predict very accurately. That's baked in. But we haven't really handled growth so well globally. It's not something we're awesome at. Right? It, we've been, inequality's been getting way out of control. Our ecosystems are out of control. Urban planning is a joke in many of the big, fast-growing cities. There's like dozens of cities with over a million people in Nigeria, and I bet you've heard of two of them. Probably you, some of you may have heard of one. Right? These are, and they're, they're just piling in with people. So systems thinkers, values-driven people, like this, it is, it is an opportunity to get in and participate in that development with the kind of approach that I'm hearing here at EHF. Because the other approach is just the cynical land grabbing, and that's happening too. There's a lot of that, right? And it's, it's not sustainable. It doesn't lead to, to stable places when you go on land grabbing and that sort of approach. So there's a tremendous opportunity to, to keep in mind there are so many little hotbeds of potential innovation over there, and I'd love to help connect people up to them. So, kia ora. Kia ora.